Hi, hi. Welcome. How are you doing, guys? It's been so long. Also, before beginning our ASMR sessions slash chatting, let me know if you hear any background noises, okay? <laughs> it would be lovely to adjust my microphone. How is the volume going? Hmm? Is my voice okay? Is the music okay? Is something louder than the other? Is the music louder than my voice? <laughs> now is the time for corrections before anything else. Coming in clear. Thank you so much. So, no background noises, right? That's great to hear. Thank you for the headbutts. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, I found this super cozy <laughs> little camera angle that I should really save. I'm still using the mic equalizer and helped you with like almost a year ago. Yes! <laughs> yes, Orion! You are really a lifesaver. <laughs> I didn't touch a single thing. <laughs> I didn't touch anything and it's working amazing. <laughs> Sorry that my hand clips through my desk. <laughs> I have magic powers. Oh! Thank you. Thank you for that hydration. <laughs> Thank you so much. I usually like a scream when this happens, but it's ASMR, so I don't think a screaming it's good in this case. Starting early today, I think Orion just discovered the powers of my redeem. <laughs> hey, Orion, I think you didn't know how this worked, right? <laughs> yeah, now you can throw water at me. <laughs> and if I want, I can change the color of the water so you can throw like Pepsi at me <laughs> or milk, but I leave it in water just for now. <laughs> so, for those who don't know, I've been for like five days on a vacation on an apartment near the beach, and the rest of the days I've been just resting and doing some house cleaning. <laughs> Don't do the milk for the love of God, of course not. <laughs> we have a lot of things to talk about today, but like vacation stories are like the first thing I would like to talk because it's real funny. So vacations, let's start with um, saying that it was extremely lovely. Again, we had an amazing balcony uh, with like views to the beach. <laughs> I think I told you guys this already, but it's funny to keep a register on this. <laughs> so, the first day we came to the apartment, we were sitting near the beach, in our balcony. Super lovely thing, right? And then, a pungent smell of weed came to me. Like, first thing in the morning. And I thought, oh well, it's like, not something I enjoy, but well, if it's only once a day, I can, you know, just not look at it. <laughs> but no, it was like three times a day. I almost couldn't sit on our balcony for too long before this west smell of weed came washing all over us and including entering the apartment. It was interesting to say the least. Like, I tried sort of fighting back with a bottle of cheap perfume that I had around. <laughs> I really tried to fight back with this bottle of perfume, but after a while of smelling questionable stuff, I didn't know if I was relaxed or if I was dragged by the smell. <laughs> Afterwards, I made a little investigation. Detective Kiki in business and I discovered that it was the neighbor upstairs so he didn't get to smell my beautiful perfume. <laughs> I live with an apartment and my neighbors all smoke weed and the smell goes through the vents. 
I mean, I think that could be sued, perhaps. I think it depends on on the rules you have around. That's my opinion, at least. Wait, Orion, are you around here still? <laughs> are you still with us today? <laughs> at first I planned on playing something today, but then I thought mm, perhaps doing a nice chatting session would be lovely. Though lately since summer started, they stopped smoking, so hey, not bad at all. <laughs> Not bad at all. In fact, I was thinking on uh, streaming on YouTube Shorts today, but... <laughs> I thought this camera angle is way too good to go to YouTube Shorts, but... <laughs> also, things that happened in my vacation. I ate a lot. You know, it's rule in the kingdom to eat a lot, right? Well, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> we ate a lot and we ate very good things. For example, we ate ramen in my favorite ramen spot. And it was incredibly delicious. It's this super nice ramen with a thick broth that honestly it can revive death. It can revive dead people. I swear to God. It's so good. Like it can nurse you back to health. <laughs> but I always ask for the Tantan ramen. Basically, something spicy. And you can choose the level of spicy you want. I usually just choose three because I like it spicy, but I don't like death, you know? <laughs> I also got to try these uh, super duper famous bulldog ramen. Uh, the carbonara one. <laughs> for some reason, it was hella spicy for me. I you should have a pretty good tolerance. In fact, I ate bulldog ramen before. Or, as it is Korean, I think it would be best to call it ramyeon? <laughs> so, I ate that thing before, but not the carbonara flavor. And it felt honestly really, really bad on my stomach. For some reason, I had stomach pains for the rest of the day after eating the bulldog ramen. <laughs> You went to Hibachi place I saw and the cook played them in trick on you? No, that was a video. That was a daily dose of internet video. <laughs> I just took screenshots. I saw that last night and I was honestly horrified. Honestly horrified. Like, no, how dare you harm the chicken? <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> But oh well. I'm not doing much ASMR today, aren't I? I will try my best. I get carried away. <laughs> but yeah, like I had stomach pains for the rest of the day and it was honestly disgusting, but the carbonara smelled great. <laughs> we also went to a place that had like it's this sort of um massive park like we call it finca that's basically a massive terrain and someone has animals in there and they have gooses they have gooses and a lot of types of birds so you can imagine i had an amazing time <laughs> i even took a photo they have a peacock they have an amazing peacock in there and he the peacock was even like flashing its feathers. It was beautiful, strikingly beautiful. It was an amazing experience to behold. And peacocks are very pretty. Are pretty but very loud. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. It's it's loud as heck, but it's alright. <laughs> that place had a very pretty tree. That's kind of violet and also has like a lunch area like you have to take your food already from outside but you can bring something and sit there <laughs> and eat under the purple flowers and it's so pretty and relaxing and it opens i think every day for like a lot of hours ever seen albino ones before no 
I've never seen an albino one. How does it look like? Did you see an albino one? <laughs> have to google that give me a second albino peacock <gasps> it's so pretty oh my god it kind of looks like my model right now don't you think <laughs> because i do think it looks like my model <laughs> But I think those are male peacocks, you know, like the ones that had the pretty feathers, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I think those are the male ones, but it's okay. I think I would rather not see um, the amount of viewers I have right now, but that's okay. I miss her Stefan Yeti over here. <laughs> It's kind of insecurity, you see. Yeah, female birds are meant to be drab in color and design, and I never understood why, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I received a bunch of unfollows, so I am <laughs> back to the base again. I can't explain that. Yeah? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I also have to edit one video I recorded before. Perhaps I have to re-record it, but... <laughs> it's okay. As you're the only one here, we can take our time chatting. <laughs> I don't think chatting works um, with so little people. The reason why female birds are drab. Oh, I would love to hear it. Hi, Yeti. How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> how are you? So nice to, hear, to see you here. I don't know how to speak anymore. Consider that I've been for like a week without using my English so much. You know what I discovered about myself? I saw one of my BODs that Kersef uploaded to YouTube and I couldn't understand myself what I was saying. Like, does it happen to you guys as well? <laughs> do I sometimes go gremlin mode and I do not pronounce correctly or something? <laughs> I was watching myself, like, to see how the audio quality was, etc, etc. And it's like, what the fuck did I even say? <laughs> Oh man, this doesn't happen in Spanish. Oh god. <laughs> this doesn't happen in Spanish. Si yo hablase español realmente no pasaría nunca, pero... <laughs> realmente no tengo una comunidad en español, así que me temo que no puedo. <laughs> A ver, podría intentarlo al fin y al cabo, pero no pasa nada. <laughs> Sometimes I wish to make Spanish streams here and there. Perhaps I can open a brand new channel to do that. <laughs> or I can do them here as well. I don't know. I always say that, but I never do anything. Sometimes I just uh, talk. I just talk just to talk and what comes out comes out. Yeah. They are meant to look over the eggs, so they are meant to be more camouflaged, so they can look over the eggs and young chicks much better than the males, since they are meant to be more flashy and pretty to attract female maids. Ah, oh, that's kind of cute! <laughs> Even though I wish female birds would be able to look all flashy and pretty as well. <laughs> I don't know. It would be lovely, but I understand the logic under that. <laughs> ah, but well, I'm not the one to complain. Hey, uh, does anyone know if the new V Rising uh, update is on? Also, Hades too. I wanted to speak about Hades. A hint to the new hidden command. The first word is good. Good girl? I don't know. <laughs> 
But yeah, I've been trying Hades too. And... <laughs> Let's say it's hard. <laughs> it's harder than the first one. It's definitely harder than the first one. Um, I am especially impressed by the second boss, Skila. The, the sirens, basically. The musical group. And... I am very surprised by how hard it is. For me, for now. <laughs> oh, Dark, you are doing it great. Like, if it doesn't uh, respond, it's because it doesn't exist. <laughs> but that's basically the hang of it. <laughs> Just keep trying. So, about Hades. I've been only playing for like a few days and I don't play it like for too long. <laughs> this morning I spent two hours playing, but that's like the longest I've played Hades. Ah, good girl! Thank you so much! <laughs> that's a lovely command. <laughs> Also a good chat. Good chat. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, basically like, do you mind spoilers? Like, but they're not like super heavy spoilers. Just about the bosses. Um, two bosses of Hades too, because I didn't progress further than that. <laughs> The music of Hades 2? No, the whole game, per se. I will mention I make commands for fun. If any of them ever bother you, let me know. Of course, of course. <laughs> for now, you are good. <laughs> so, about Hades 2. Uh, one of the bosses is basically a master of yours. I will try not to spoil so much. And at first I thought, oh, this is an impressive fight, but after a while I got the hang of it, even though it can take me uh, by surprise every now and then. Now the second boss, that's like the furthest I've gone, it's Eskila and the Sirens, it's in the ocean, and they are a music band. <laughs> Basically the hang of that fight is you go for the minions first, you go for the buzz and go for the drums. And then you go for the singer. But when it reaches uh, the mid of the fight, basically when you defeat half of the health, uh, the girls raise again. Like the ones you defeated raise again. And they go mad, absolutely crazy, absolutely murderous. And it's a lot of things in the screen. And for some reason, I feel like that my character is not going as fast as I would like to. I feel that sometimes in that fight it's not going as fast as I usually go. Like avoiding and running. I feel like they do something to slow me down and that throws me off because I am used to a timing. <laughs> you know, like until that point I've had this certain rhythm avoiding things and I know time responses. But they do something that messes with that. Therefore, they mess with how I am able to avoid things. And it's way harder than you might expect, at least for me. In my defense, uh, the prodigy brother, being you say here, wasn't able to progress as well. So I am feeling very validated. <laughs> in fact, I progressed further than him in that, in that fight. But I only progressed that far because I saw him failing a few times, so I've been visually learning. <laughs> he has started working today. <laughs> oh man. So I was fighting Eskila and the rock band, like uh, Dark says here, and suddenly they raised when they were like half of the health and it, it was so many things on the screen so damn many things on the screen it was horrible <laughs> i don't know if they are gonna nerf it like i don't think they should nerf it but 
definitely tweaking a little bit here and there wouldn't do much harm. Again, this is only my opinion. Only my opinion. <laughs> I have played Enter the Gungeon. I bet you could do it. I don't know. I think this is harder than Enter the Gungeon. I've played Enter the Gungeon as well. <laughs> But, I have to say, even though that fight is hard, the music is amazing. <laughs> the only thing that pisses me off is that when they defeat you, you know that bosses uh, tell you things when they defeat you, right? <laughs> Eskila goes and says, Thank you, Ocean! <laughs> like a rock band. Oh my god. <laughs> It's awful! I get so pissed off! I get so pissed off! Like, shut the fuck up! <laughs> like, you did not deserve that victory! <laughs> but this is being. This is like making wonders to work on my frustration. <laughs> when you hear the same line. <laughs> 5,000 times, I feel you. <laughs> I totally feel you. Also, in my vacations I noticed something about myself. I think I like the city life, but I also think it's hella stressful and very noisy. <laughs> I live in a small town. Well, yeah, I would say it's a small town, and it's kind of quiet here, and I love it. I also love how convenient living in the city is, like you have everything super close. Um, the buses seems to like cross your path a thousand times compared to my little town where if you lose the bus you have to wait 30 more minutes. Um, but also, buildings are incredibly noisy. Like, you can hear your neighbor steering the cup of coffee in the mornings. <laughs> and you can smell things like the weed. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, once I spend vacations, uh, I start appreciating my small, lovely town. I just wish I could have a car or something, but it's okay. I don't even have a driver's license. <laughs> and I am 27. I hear from people that Hades 2 is most, almost bigger than the first Hades, which is a bit crazy to hear. <gasps> really? I didn't know that! <laughs> There's actually construction going on outside right now. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> I mean, outside of my house I have my neighbor that... It's sort of like... Well, he runs an illegal car How do you call it in English? Sorry, <laughs> I have a lapsus. Um, repair? Car repair? <laughs> He's a mechanic, an illegal one, but a mechanic nonetheless. <laughs> and every time the police comes, he's like, no, officer, this is only my car. <laughs> I am not bothering anyone, am I? And they are like, yes, yes, you do bother people. <laughs> Cars are super expensive, yes, I know. Broke people like me that go into debt to be able to buy an expensive car so they can look better than the rest. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> but oh well, to each their own. Yeah, it's also very funny to hear like a dog going absolutely bonkers in the middle of the night, but I'm not gonna complain about that. Because, once again, <laughs> my vacations made me appreciate the quiet life of my town. Like, the only thing you have to deal with is like a dog going mad sometimes in the night, but like in the capital, near the beach, you can hear everything. 
you can hear when people are using them. Uh, vacuum cleaners, you can hear them. I could hear someone run their washing machine like at 2 in the morning. And I was like, but why though? Why at 2 a.m.? Are you mad? <laughs> but the, the place had a lot of perks. <laughs> so I'm not going to complain at all. Have you ever been on vacation, guys? Have you gone somewhere or traveled somewhere? I'm just curious. I think I've never traveled. Yes, I've never traveled outside of my country, I have to say. I've traveled inside of my country, but never outside. And it's sort of scary not to be. not to lie. Not that I can think so. Like, did you ever travel, Darky? Holiday World theme park? <laughs> as, some, as someone that has this stupid fear of heights, um, some attractions are hell. <laughs> I've noticed that a lot of attractions involve uh, going to <laughs> places where they take you super high up in the sky and it's super unsafe. <laughs> so I can almost join no rides. <laughs> you love roller coasters? Oh my god, no. <laughs> I could never, like, you're not gonna catch me going into a roller coaster. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> I'm just way too afraid of heights and I would have a panic attack immediately. Oh, but Kiki, it's adrenaline. No, <laughs> I do not leave you. <laughs> Where's the adrenaline? I only have fear. I only feel the fear. <laughs> oh god. I was once on a wooden coaster. A wooden coaster? I'm sorry. Did I understand that well enough? A wooden coaster? Why? <laughs> Do you have a death wish? By any chance? <laughs> Do you have a death wish? No, it's, I am completely serious. <laughs> a coaster made out of food. Yeah! Yeah, that's why! It's like, why do you have a death wish? It's called the Vujash if you want to see it. I don't want to get dizzy just from looking at it out of fear. Oh my god, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you guys are, are crazy. <laughs> Every time I go to a fair, I see these attractions that like you see it and they like dash you up to the sky. And they pulls you up to the sky and then everyone screams super loud. No. <laughs> Kiki, do you wanna go? No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'd rather not go on a roller coaster. See, Dark is on my side. He's a wise man. He's a wise man. <laughs> Me and Darky are gonna sit outside of the park, relaxed breathing, stable in the earth, you know, we're not gonna die, <laughs> we're not gonna lose our phones, nor shoes, nothing. Perhaps we can go to the, um, how do you call it in English? <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, a haunted house, we can go to the haunted house. <laughs> I've never ever been in one of those, but it's probably fun. <laughs> Funny enough, I lost weight just to fit on a coaster seat. <laughs> I don't have to worry about these things <laughs> because I'm never going into one. <laughs> and the people that say never say never, I promise you, I'm never going into a roller coaster. <laughs> like, you would have to pay me a million dollars to me. <laughs> sit on a roller coaster and hold it. 
<laughs> I think it's way too crazy, man. Like, humanity finds en enjoyment in silly things. I don't get it. <laughs> I hope you're liking today's stream, by the way. I just thought something chill to, let's say, warm up would be nice. Sorry, I had the randomest uh, hiccup in there. <laughs> Can't pay quite that high. Good. <laughs> I like eating spicy peppers. How high? Like how spicy? Mm, I don't really eat their peppers per se, but I eat the spices made with that pepper. <laughs> like the recent spicy mix I bought. In fact, I bought it yesterday. It's these seven spices. Um, I think they are Chinese. It's a mix of spices. It's really delicious. It's called Seven Spices, as I told you already. And it goes well with almost anything. <laughs> also, oh my god, I just remembered. I'm sorry for breaking the ASMR. Um, I bought yesterday the worst onigiri in my life because I had to replace uh, Asian ingredients in my house. So I went to the Asian part of uh, the capital and I went to Asian stores and I bought uh, ingredients that you don't find anywhere else like jello daikon and uh, big bottles of soy sauce and well more things and I saw this mix of spices and it's honestly quite delicious I also found finally the famous Korean glass noodles that literally do not taste like anything unless you put sauces on it. <laughs> but the good thing is that they absorb pretty well the spices and sauces, so you can do almost anything with it. And it's really cool to see how transparent they are. <laughs> I am thinking about going into botany though. Oh, botany is amazing! I am really intrigued by um, edible plants, like edible wild plants. But the thing is that every region has different plants. Love the Pokemon music? Indeed! It's Pokemon fluffy and it's real great. <laughs> but as I was saying, um, I need to find somewhere edible plants in my area why with the obsession you might ask it's because imagine that a war comes here and there is like nothing to eat right <laughs> then i am able to go just out in the wild and pick those edible herbs edible plants and survive another day call it catastrophic but at least i'm not those uh, prepper people that buy a lot of things in case an apocalypse happens. <laughs> I just wish I would have enough money to be able to buy like a house with a lovely terrain where I could plant my own food. At least some potatoes, some onions, perhaps garlic, etc. etc. I'm not a prepper. But, I mean, I have a bit of a prepper on my mind. Uh, but I'm not going crazy on it. Like, I like to have, for example, these rechargeable uh, torches. Torches? Thumb lights? Uh, yeah. Flashlights, that's the word. <laughs> I am sorry. I have rechargeable flashlights. You have a little... Uh, knob you can turn to power up the lantern possibly forever <laughs> and I like to have it just in case you don't have uh, batteries available I also am pending on buying one of these days a solar powered um, mobile phone charger I know it will not charge your phone up to 100 but it's good in case of an emergency. You never know when something like that is gonna happen. Alright Kiki, how are you with puzzle games? I find them really entertaining. I love Professor Layton. 
In fact, I was thinking that they didn't release any news on the new Professor Layton game since ever. <laughs> They announced it and said, okay, bye, peace out, and decided to like go away. Level 5, if you are if you are seeing this, news, please, news. We want news on Professor Layton and also fantasy life. Have you heard of Animal Well? Nope. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Lation. <laughs> I love Professor Layton and I think it has amazing stories as well, but people overlook it because of the artist style. And it's such a shame because it's honestly really, really good. A puzzle metroidvania? Oh, I have to research that. <laughs> I have to research that. <laughs> I found, I think, what for me it's the best uh, mod pack about Minecraft. Um, it's something along the lines of Chosen's uh, modded adventure or something like that. The only thing that I should like fix is that it takes, without nothing else open, it takes 60% of my memory. <laughs> so. I have to like go in there, perhaps deactivate some things, uh, <laughs> so I can, you know, make it take less resources. Because Wadugo itself, basically, the software I am using for the 3D, already takes like 40, 50, 40, yeah, percent of my memory. Imagine. <laughs> With that thing open. Absolutely no. <laughs> it's still on 10% discount, unfortunately, considering that I had these vacations recently. I have to save a bit. I mean, I have money, but I think it would be wise for me to wait until perhaps the next uh, Steam sale. By the way, does anyone know when the next Steam sale is? Because I am very interested in saving for that occasion. Oh, DM me! <laughs> DM me the game. That's very kind of you, thank you very much. <laughs> but the concept honestly looks incredible. The concept looks amazing. No clue, they be random. Are they random? Like, I think there is a Steam sale. Like, a spring sale, summer sale and winter sale. <laughs> Perhaps the summer steam sale will be here soon enough. I am hoping, I am hoping. Because we're getting close to summer. I am not happy about it, by the way. I am not happy about it. The summer sale should be on soon, actually. Oh, perfect! Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> oh, I am so excited about this steam sale. Sorry, I smacked the microphone with my finger. <laughs> Summer said like back to school. Yeah, like you know the con that concept looks very funny for me because it's like you have to go back to school. Yeah, allow me to distract you with a selection of games that are on sale. <laughs> oh, honey, <laughs> don't you think it's hilarious? Because I do. <laughs> I don't think it's funny as heck. <laughs> Let me distract you with this amazing selection of games <laughs> that you've been wanting for a while, being incredibly <laughs> very cheap. <laughs> oh my god. Like, is there any game that you're expecting real hard? I'm just fishing for um, whatever it's on sale that I think, ooh, it might be interesting. It's hilarious, me who's not in school. Same, but still. <laughs> For people that actually go to school, college, high school, whatever. It's it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> Hempai, welcome! Thank you for being here. <laughs> Do you like the new look? Thank you so much. It's been a while since I saw you, right? 
Are you enjoying the new Risk of Rain DLC? <laughs> I don't have it, unfortunately, but I have to uh, see it somewhere. <laughs> A YouTube video, perhaps, or a stream. I've been busy and will have to sleep regularly, and that's important. Uh, I asked you if you liked the model and the new look, basically, and the Risk of Rain new DLC. I don't remember the name, but there is a new DLC with new characters and scenarios and music. I am a tiny bit obsessed with the <laughs> rain formerly known as purple, that's a song from Risk of Rain 2. Is it the potion? Oh, the update! That's right, <laughs> sorry, I've been away for a while. The Dead Cells was DLC, I think? I don't know much about the update, unfortunately. <laughs> I've been focusing on other things lately. Also, Akuma coming to Street Fighter 6. Wasn't it before? I thought it was by default. Because Akuma is widely known. So I expected for it to be way sooner. That cells will be halting soon, do you think so? Like, are they stopping with that cells? The end is near and the final DLC. Well, at some point they have to move on, I think. As good as Dead Cells is, probably the team wants to work on something else. Innovation is in there, and honestly for me, indie games are carrying the industry lately. They are carrying the game. Indies are going to the top. <laughs> I honestly like, there's only two companies I trust with uh, AAA games. Um, basically, those being uh, Valve and the Nintendo. <laughs> Outside of those, I do not really trust anyone with AAA games anymore. Oh, from software as well. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I forgot that they existed. That's a good point. Definitely the most trusted from software is also a very reliable source of AAA games. <laughs> Shinobers 2 is still alive. I am very surprised by that fact. <laughs> Every time someone uh, tells anything about a Shen or something, I think Shenoblade, Shenoblade, Shenoblade! <laughs> but that's on me. <laughs> There's also Tango Game Works, but Microsoft dissolved them. We were talking about that the other day on a stream about how sad I was that they closed Tango. And I think one of the arcane divisions. And I was extremely saddened by that fact. That's why one company buying them all of the studies is very dangerous game. And we see why. But hey, they can still like band together and perhaps doing a kickstart like, hey, we have this amazing concept, we rebranded this, I don't know, something else, you know? Like, it's not too crazy. Instead of tango, they can call themselves, I don't know, uh, flamenco or something. <laughs> Bachata. <laughs> Ballroom dance studios. <laughs> Band together again and just open Kickstarters, etc. etc. Because <laughs> they think they didn't sell well, but I think that Hi Fi Rush sold very well, right? Like, correct me if I am wrong, okay? But I think that Hi Fi Rush actually sold pretty well. Since the reason why they didn't worry, because uh, of the budget from Microsoft. Oh man, it's the best top quality game last year, but <laughs> the problem is they did not meet expected sale. But I saw on Twitter like one of the Tango people that said that they actually met the expectations even. Once again, correct me if I am wrong, but it's only a tweet I saw. But I think it was from a guy inside of the, um, of the team, I think? Well, oh well. 
the business is complex very complex do you know what i think is gonna break the whole industry for a while only gta 6 i think it's gonna break the whole industry into for a while and it can be for good or for incredibly worse but it's rockstar so we can have some faith that it's gonna be an amazing game the only thing is i fear for the workers because they are gonna be they're gonna be crunched up very very crunched and that's sad because i have empathy they did the, the problem is big corpus yes agree oh and if you want another news you know the people who made that space remastered yeah what they got this over too oh <gasps> no way why though why though no i am out, i'm outraged this is outrageous i don't know why but they could uh, let them be until that space two three <gasps> Oh my god, I don't want to scream, but Jesus Christ, that's fucked up. There's a bunch of big corporal problems, but what's going on? Why them? Did they give a valid reason for closing that studio? They did amazingly well, right? Everyone loved, I think, that space remaster. I don't understand. It was so good indeed. Like Capcom's Dragon's Dogma, not so important. Microtransactions. Oh my god, the Dragon's Dogma thing. It happened a while ago, but we talked about it and oh Jesus Christ. I don't know if they fixed anything because I've not been up to date. But I saw all of the mess and all of the chaos that Dragon's Dogma happened uh, to cause. Also, did you see the new Assassin's Creed, a 100 USD for the base game? Like, I saw that there was like a 60 dollar version, but that's like cut or anything? Like, can someone explain that to me? Like, do they really intend to charge a hundred euros for a game? Really? Are we that crazy nowadays? Thing is, Capcom does good game. They are just greedy. They are way too greedy, honestly. And that scares me. But I'm not paying 100 games. Uh, 100 euros or dollars for a game, sorry. I slipped in there. I just hope they don't do the same with Rice Cosmetics with Wiles. They are gonna do it. <laughs> they are gonna sell the... Blah. I know how to speak. They are gonna sell those, probably, <laughs> as DLCs or whatever. Mind you, in Rise, for example, for cosmetic options, it's way worse than World. In World, you had amazing ways of personalizing your character, not only with hairstyles, but also armors and layered armors were way cooler. The designs were amazingly flashy and amazing, but in Rise, they are just meh. There's only like one or two layered armors that are worthy of my attention in Rise. I just chuck it up to Corbo and we. <laughs> it, the message was sent to the heavens. Yeah, Dark, I think. Just like you. I haven't played a new Assassin's Creed game since Black Flag, actually. The last game I played was. Um, the one in London. Unity? What's it called? Uh, the one that had... Um, well... <laughs> it was in London and it was very well. Wait, I got lost in the chat. <laughs> there we go. The cosmetics, I meant the weapons and armor. Yeah, yes, me too, me too. I'm fine with NPC cosmetics, but weapons and armor? Give us the quest instead. Yeah, I think the same. It's like, I don't mind working for that. 
you know, I worked for the Amaterasu skin for the dog. And it was well, in my opinion. It was well. <laughs> Honestly, I stick with that. That's like their best game. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Do you know what Assassin's Creed game is now? You can insta kill five enemies with a slow mo and appear there behind and backstab. Really? Just as Dark said, I have no idea about new and modern Assassin's Creed. Honestly. So I have no idea on the state of Assassin's Creed, but that's okay. And I am like, what happened? This ain't skill anymore. <laughs> it's just the sensation of satisfaction, I suppose. Suppose. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I'm gonna drink some water if you allow me. One second. There we go. Sorry for the weird moves and sounds. <clears throat> Hydration acquired. <laughs> there we go. Remember being historically accurate about uh, remote controlling our... yeah? I do have other stuff I want to complain, like PlayStation being about... Of course, go ahead, we are here to listen. <laughs> because I also hate how Sony have been behaving. Also, thank you for the head pads, Dark. Thank you so much. <laughs> Alt black flag was probably the best, the last good one. Sorry, hiccup again. Yeti, you're probably also right. <laughs> one thing for certain, the PSN is optional, I'm glad they rolled back. Oh, we're speaking about the Helldivers thing, right? The Helldivers scenario. And how they only reacted once uh, people started asking for massive refunds and Steam was saying, you know, valid, give them the refund. <laughs> then Sony said, oh fuck, no, let's go back. Which is now, certain countries can't purchase PS exclusives. That's shitty. I can't purchase Ghost of... You can't? Why? Oh my god. That's fucked up. I feel like I'm one of the few who has still used the head battery really mostly. And that's very wholesome, Dark. <laughs> that's very, very wholesome of you. And give us Bloodborne, damn it. <laughs> we demand Bloodborne on PC so we are able to mod it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried the Greek one and Ubisoft has no idea how to do level systems. <laughs> oh, Ubisoft. Every time I see that one cool game is made by Ubisoft, I start fearing because it's like, oh no, they are gonna ruin it somehow. They are gonna ruin it somehow. I feel it. I feel it coming. <laughs> I can feel it in my bones. Even Ghost of Tsushima, it's like, uh, hey, we can give you money, just listen to us. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know why that reminded me that, uh, well, it reminded me about broken games by Ubisoft. <laughs> Sorry, my brain was in a Spanish mode. I was thinking in Spanish. <laughs> Ubisoft has stopped making good games since they've been downgrading and following the formula since ever. Yeah. Also, The Sims 4? Like, they should stop working on The Sims 4 already. It's time to let it rest and focus on The Sims 5. <laughs> if you can call it The Sims. As they say, it's gonna be online, it's gonna be live service thingy, probably so people can't pirate it anymore. But you know we have the power of good hackers. 
<laughs> I know there's gonna be a hacker or a programmer somewhere that is gonna basically say, yeah, The Sims 5, I'm gonna mod it so you're able to play it without going online. <laughs> it's absurd. They have so many DLCs. Like, you could probably buy a computer with the amount of money you would have to spend to have all the DLCs. In this house, we support going full Jack Sparrow when it comes to The Sims games. <laughs> Also, Ubisoft has been buying board games just for a quick buck. Really? Oh god. Well, let them focus on board games instead. <laughs> like, no, Ubisoft, go to the board games, forget about video games. It sucks that some of these games require always online just to play. Yeah, it's such a shame, man. These are single player games for. Yes. For fuck's sake, absolutely agree. I don't see how it will work being online, to be honest. It's like, I like taking my time taking decisions. Is this gonna be an MMO? MMO or something like that? It's like, yeah, no, I, I don't wanna do perversions with other people. I wanna do social experiments with my Sims. <laughs> I don't need online. Oh, sorry. Do you know the worst part? When big corpos like EA and all that buying studio, then if it doesn't work, they dissolve it. Ah, oh, why don't they do like partnerships? You know, like, hey, we saw that game. We want to support you, a smaller team. We're gonna give you money and be your publisher. Uh, in exchange, that game is gonna give us royalties until it stops selling, you know? So we don't have to buy you, we still get sweet, sweet money. Or like what Bethesda did with Obsidian, like we're gonna pay you a certain amount of money, so you make a game we want you to make. And if it doesn't work, well then you go on your way. They have been selling video games of board games. Oh no, oh no, 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 that's so... Oh no. That's... No, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't work for me. Ubisoft is going mad. They probably should change the CEO and a lot of people in power. That's me, that's only my opinion though. That actually reminds me of Riot Forge. I have no idea what that is. When it comes to Riot and League of Legends, I want nothing to do with them. A bunch of people lost their job when Riot fired a lot of their employees. Really? They fired so many? And I thought they were going very well. That made the card game slow down. They were going to release a card game now? <laughs> probably if they invest in more animation, they would probably have more money. More. <laughs> Then, then, wait, <laughs> sorry, then there is Hashbro. Hashbro, oh Hashbro. So Riot owns Riot Forge, a studio that helps smaller studios. It's like a collaboration. Yeah, I'm fairly scared of what you're gonna say next. <laughs> like Riot Forge with company name presents league character the game. Oh, <laughs> okay. little break in the middle of the stream. Remember, if you're enjoying the stream, consider please following me. It really helps a lot. And if you can spare a bit, you can su even subscribe and use super cool emotes. And you support a lovely princess. Thank you so much. They only managed to make five so far. Well, it's, in my opinion, when it comes to the, that kind of thing, it's best to go slow. Like, be safe, go slow. Haha, <laughs> not this time, it didn't work the jump scare this time. <laughs> but yes, when it comes to like big studios collaborating with small studios, I think it's best to like go slow, you know, breathe, make one, dedicate 
time, effort, resources to that one. And if it's good, then go to the next. I don't get all the greed. Also, thank you, Darky. Thank you so much for the head pads. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Head pads for you? Wait. Come on. <laughs> Song of Nunu, Rin King, Mage Seeker, Convergence, and Hedgetech Mayhem. I have no idea about any of those. <laughs> and I am kind of glad. By far, Ruined King and Song of Nunu is the best. <laughs> so they do everything in their power to do more games except fixing League of Legends. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I get it. They are good games related to League characters. Yeah, I can guess that, but I had. When I was a teenager, I had my League of Legends moment. <laughs> I go, but I have a good stream, Kiki. Thank you so much, Yeti. <laughs> Thank you so much for stopping by. Song of Nuno is a 3D platform about a boy and his Yeti for adventure. Oh, that's so cute. That's so adorable. Rind King is a turn based RPG. They made an RPG? What? I'm sorry. It's just. Wow, okay. <laughs> I didn't expect for them to make a turn based RPG. <laughs> I don't know why the concept is so funny for me. <laughs> Mage Seeker is a pixel beat em up action. Wait! <laughs> they are going all out, huh? That's a lot of like different genres of video games. <laughs> I beat him up. They need to make a bullet hell, man. They need to make a bullet hell with BB or something. BB was it called? No. Well, the BB copy, you know. Baker? <laughs> I think it was called Baker? <laughs> they need to make a bullet hell with Baker. <laughs> A rhythm game! Oh my god! <laughs> a rhythm game! Oh no! I don't know why I find this thing so funny. This is so damn funny! Oh my god! So these games are from other studios, like uh, using that IP for a cool story. Oh, interesting! Interesting! I mean, they are giving jobs to people, so it's not that it's a bad thing. <laughs> I think I'm gonna leave the stream over here, guys. So, thank you so much for stopping by, and see you guys the day after tomorrow, okay? See you soon!